Alright, we're on the floor of the International Bowl Expo trade show with the, uh, let's see, Executive Administrator? Executive Director? Executive Director's just fine. Okay, that sounds good. No more money, but it pays good. Uh, title's good. Is Bill Supper, one of the journeymen for the industry. I think he's worked with or for everybody that we know of anymore anyway. So, uh, Bowl Expo was established quite a while ago, and I remember Ipsia would run their meetings right after Bowl Expo, and the manufacturer said, Geez, can you guys kind of do it together so we don't have to stay out for a few extra days? And it became a very great marriage. Yeah, Bill, you're right. Um, actually, when I was with Ebonite back in the early 90s, is when I came to the IPSIA folks and asked them, hey, you know, uh, I'm sorry, BPA folks, and say, why can't IPSIA and BPA just join forces instead of having two uh, separate classes or two separate functions? Uh, and it is. It has been a great marriage. Uh, this way, people can come and see all of the BPA Bowl Expo, see all the vendors, and also have IPSIA part of it. We have a two-day. We had a two-day seminar Monday and Tuesday, uh, eight or nine seminars, five each day. Uh, it was great. I mean, we had a hundred people during uh, the seminars, anywhere from uh, Del Warren on collegiate coaching to Dr. Dean to uh, ball motions with ma major manufacturers. So it was uh, injury prevention with the USBC folks. So really, Monday and Tuesday prior to Ball Expo was great. The week before Ball Expo, we had uh, Technology on Lane seminar with our president who just joined us, Lou Marquez, and our hands-on training with uh, Jay Hawk and Russ Wilson. So uh, it's been a very busy two weeks, very productive two weeks, and uh, we hope it continues for the rest of the day as well as carries over to the rest of the year. Absolutely, and if we go way back to the roots, it was actually IPSA back then, and we added instructors, and we've also had now added instructors to Bowl Expo, where uh, USA Bowling and now all the coaching programs are also tied in, and where the bowling riders used to be tied in with the ABC convention, being administered by BPA, it's like one great big happy family here. Well, you know, Bill, that's the way it should be. Yes. I mean, so, you know, this is nothing that says, wow, what a unique thought process. This is the way it's supposed to be. All the entities should be together. You know, USBC was in Arlington with us last year. You know, it was great. So, yeah, you, when we bring everybody together under one roof for one purpose, and that's to help this industry, we need to continue doing that. We need to make it stronger. Uh, and, you know, BPAA and USBC and IPSIA, the manufacturers and everybody who's involved in this show, uh, you know, needs to continue to support it and, and do what they're doing. So, uh, you know, it has been a great, great uh, week, week and a half for Ipsium, but it's, I think it's been great for the bowling proprietors and everyone else who supports the organization. Yeah, absolutely, and since Lou's got the youngest mind of us here, maybe he can remember who all of the award winners were in the last couple of. Oh no, he doesn't either. <laughs> no, I, I think I can do a pretty okay. good job at that. Uh, for the President's Award, we had um, Daniel Cohen out of um, Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, Daniel was uh, you know, given the uh, award for, uh, for having excellence in, in service, excellence with community, excellence you know, in retail. And it's very well deserving. Um, for our Pro Shop of the Year, it was Donna Connors and Carol Mormon. Two great you know, uh, instrumental Pro Shop operators that uh, actually understand the, the business of retail and, and education um, as a, any good great pro shop should. So. Yeah, everyone remembers Storm and Norman and I think Donna Connor just received another award as well recently. Yes, yes. Yeah. And then uh, with the Lighthouse Award we had uh, our ex Ipsia president George Javas. Ah, uh, right. Very instrumental in the groundwork of uh, bringing uh, uh, Ipsia to Arlington or to the uh, BPAA for its organization. Yeah, that's Star War, Star Wars, Star, Star Pro Shops, Shops Star in the Chicago Shops. land area. Yes. 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 So very good.
and, and one other I don't want to lose sight of. Oh no. Our sponsor of the uh, IPSIA USB-C Awards Luncheon, Storm Products, they got uh, an award that we have come up with called the Partnership Award and we presented to Bill and Barbara Christman and Storm as our partners uh, for this year for 2013. So uh, that was the surprise one which we didn't announce to the, to the industry prior and they were very uh, very appreciative that we gave him that and I'm award. gonna imagine Barb accepted the award. Actually Bob ex Barb accepted and so did Bill. I mean oh. I brought them both up there and uh, you know Bill did his normal thank you and <laughs> Barb did a couple more words. Exactly. <laughs> so Lou when I was talking to you yesterday about coming on and doing the interview today you said yeah because there's a whole lot of new stuff going on. Well you know we've got some new programs that are for our membership. Uh, you know we always want to uh, try to come up with new ideas to entice new members, you know, that are looking into our organization. And uh, one of the things that we started with, uh, I think we made the announcement this week at the Open Forum, was about trying to be more instrumental in, in acquiring health care services for our membership. Uh, trying to get uh, business insurance, uh, you know, tangible items that, that make business sense. Um, investment uh, programs uh, to further their finances and just uh, being able to be more uh, proactive in thinking about the future. And we partnered with uh, MetLife Corporation uh, to help us in certain key markets. And uh, we've got uh, some good contact with leads from our membership that are willing to sit down with an agent and start the ball rolling to looking into some better financial services. So that's a new program that we have. And then uh, Bill's uh, very instrumental in working on the uh, professional, you know, feet on the street program, which is another thing. Bill probably talk a little bit more about that, but that's uh, where we uh, bring in our professional staff and help to uh, bring the the, the the programs of Ipsia more to the front, forefront to the consumer, kind of get them to understand, you know, who we are as an organization and let our pro shops know who we are and, and what we do for our organizations. Yeah, because in IBMA we've been talking about membership because there's not much print media left in the bowling industry. And it's, well, if we want new members, we got to create opportunities and jobs for them. And with Ipsy, you're creating that egg. So there are benefits to becoming a member of Ipsy. Uh, current membership, Bill? Current membership is uh, over 500. You know, we'll finish. We'll finish well over 500 this year. Uh, this is a very good bowl expo for us. Uh, our international exposure is just growing in leaps and bounds. Lou and I have been to Philippines. We've been to Singapore. Uh, we've had classes in Europe and other Asian countries. But uh, a lot of Asian countries have come to us and say, "Can you come over here?" China, Japan, for instance, Hong Kong. Uh, also in Europe, uh, this morning Lou and I had a meeting and we have four IPSIA training classes, uh, hands-on training scheduled beginning at the end of October and uh, through the middle of November in Italy, France, Holland, and Sweden and the UK. So there's actually, there's actually five that we're going to combine into four at one location, but there's five countries that uh, really wants to learn more and IPSIA is the only certified educational program in existence. So you want to be certified, you want to hang that shingle on the wall where your customer says, well, I'm going to a professional, we provide it. Yes, and what Lou was talking about is healthcare program. It's like, wow, how come we haven't had it before? Because I know most of us that were in the pro shop business or maybe currently, the only way we could really survive was we had wives that had real jobs that could provide that health care program. So now that we can get it for the pro shop themselves, it's got to be an incentive to get more membership. Yeah, we, we know it will be, and uh, we're going to start small. And this is the thing that Lou and I really stress to MetLife, our partners there, is let's start with three or four states. Let's see. Let's get all of the problems out of the way before we open it up. Because the one thing, the hardest thing in this about healthcare programs to the independent business person is each state has different regulations, each state has different fees, each state has different deductibles. 
you know, when I got into this, uh, and, and Lou did actually, Lou's the one that really pioneered it. When we got into it, it was just mind-boggling. And go, yes, we need to do it for the reasons you just mentioned. But on the other hand, uh, you know, can we pull it off? And thank goodness MetLife said, you guys supply us with the names of your pro shops. Give us a little intro, send a letter out saying, oh, by the way, we are available in your state and we'll take the ball from there. So thank goodness it worked that way and not in reverse. Uh, do we have a list of this limited slate of state yet? Yeah, we do. Uh, right now we are Indiana, Michigan, and Florida. Uh, and Ohio. See, he just added one, which I didn't even know about. And Ohio. Wow. So there's four. You know, and think about it. Those are those are pretty good bowling states, aren't they? That's just what I was going to bring up. I mean, that's probably happy membership right there. And, and the funny thing about it is that the, the representatives that are controlling the program actually are now starting to venture out into other states. So as they grow, the, the key area also grows. So Florida will turn into Georgia. It'll turn into Alabama. It'll slowly start growing, and then they eventually the states start running into each other, and it'll just merge. So I mean, that's got to be fantastic news for the pro shops out there, and. Are there any requirements of, of Ipsy membership, obviously? So it's not like they have to have multiple set, multiple pro shops or work 40 hours. If they're an Ipsy member, that's good enough. And they're living there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you got to be, be living. You got to be living. got to be living. Absolutely. Okay. Only two membership alive. Yeah. In that order? Or? Uh, got to be a member first. Gotta we be don't member. care if you're alive or not. <laughs> okay, so great. I, I think the, the big thing, though, though, is that uh, the the interest from our membership on the healthcare programs um, has really sparked them to really say, hey, you know what? That Ipsia, they're doing pretty good things, and, and now I want to belong. And we're getting, I'm getting a lot of interest in membership and, hey, how do I join? What are the other programs, you know, that are in membership? Like the the merchant services program, the ball program, the law program. Now they're starting to look at the whole package because now it's a big ticket item. You got a lot of different things in that catalog for services, and now they see, wow, Ipsia is a value that I must have, and that's the beauty. Yeah, because it's definitely a strive. I know for over the years it kind of stagnated or went backwards a little bit, but I know under new leadership and presidency. It's turned into a really great organization, and I'm sure BPA administration has helped a lot. It has. You know, there's a three instrumental presidents. We had Del Warren, who had did a, you know started going in the right direction with us. Susie Minshew did a marvelous job, and of course now having having Lou with you know as president and changing the board of directors terms. The problem, Bill, in the past was the board of directors and the president would be a president for one year, and he'd be gone. Well, I, I told the board I can't live with a president, a good president, an exceptional president for one year. I need at least two years, and I need the people be, you know, behind he or she in order to move into that position. So the way we have it structured now is we have that succession where before, you know, it's great if you have a president for one year that you want to get rid of. You know, but when you have a great president, that you don't want to get rid of him, and all of a sudden it's mandated by bylaws, he's out of there, that hurts us. Yeah, you got to know where the pitfalls are and where to make the adjustments on that second year. Because if you just make the mistakes, the next guy's going to make the same ones over again. Exactly. So it's great having you guys on, and we'll let you just go back to your jobs. <laughs> well, great, we appreciate the opportunity, and uh, hopefully it'll be great. All right, thanks. Thank you.